What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Your boy is outside. But I'm just at the lake chilling right now. But I was about to head to a different spot real quick. And I was just about to go over my bike and talk to you guys about is it still worth it after a thousand miles? Alright, so now we're on our way to this little flat spot. I didn't want to film it at the lake and stuff because it's just so bright and the sun is shining hard right now. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram as well. Because I wasn't going to do my next giveaway on YouTube. I'm going to still talk about it or whatever, but... My next giveaway is happening through Instagram. And I'm going to do it through Instagram because the item that I am going to give away, I know more people would be hype on Instagram than my YouTube. So if you want to figure it out what it is that I'm giving away, make sure you guys go to my Instagram and check it out. But I'm going to get back with you guys once we get to this flat spot. That was so smooth. It made a perfect circle. That was a perfect circle. But alright, let's go and get this thousand mile review for you guys. I feel like my bike is still nice. It only has about, let's see, 1,185 miles on it so far. And I've had it for about five months now. I just don't ride super far and out of my city because... I have nowhere to go around here. So boring in this tiny town. This isn't even a city. This is a town that I'm in. But all right, thousand mile review. Let me get started. First thing I did, you know, I changed my handlebars out to these 2.5 inch Luna riser bars because the other bars were just way too straight. They was really hurting my back. The riser bars are actually the first upgrade I feel like everybody needs. I still have my other bars as well. I don't know if I'm going to sell them or keep them. I might just keep them. You know, you always need to have spare parts of everything on your bike just in case. You never know what could happen. The second thing I changed out on my bike actually was the entire harness. But that wasn't Suron's fault or anything. That was my fault because when I first got the bike, I actually cut the wrong green wire in there instead of the one with the little black line on it. <laughs> and I had to buy a whole new harness that was a hundred dollars and when I first got my bike I couldn't turn my regen off and my regen is still stuck on like the strongest one from the factory so I figured buying the new harness would change that as well you know and I cut the green wire and then I put the new harness on all that everything tried the little dongle cable that they gave me to turn off the regen didn't work at all so I'm still stuck with the strongest regen ever and I don't know why I haven't contacted uh, Luna Cycle or anything about it because I just figured they wouldn't help me. So uh, yeah, I'm just dealing with it. But I'm going to find a way to get into the motor and that's how I'm going to turn my regen off. Well, of course I know how to get in there, I just got to find what to disconnect to actually turn my regen off. And as you can see I'm still completely stuck. The only thing I took off was that huge sticker kit that they put on there. I didn't like that at all just the orange color on the bike i did not like that but i can't cap though my bike's still going strong so far literally everything is still stuck everything except the handlebars and my brake pads of course let me talk about these brakes i was just riding one day and the little bolt that goes through the brakes to hold them in actually just popped out and i had no idea until i went to hit my brakes and my brake pads were gone i had nothing in my caliper at all so now i use the cotter pin instead of that little bolt that they put in there because that little bolt like it's about i'm gonna just say like this long and the whole bolt doesn't have thread on it just the little top part so you stick it all the way through there you only screw it through this tiny little piece and the rest of the bolt is just loose in there and i don't trust it at all so yeah i just went with the cotter pin you know same thing just stick it through there bend this one side back and I haven't had any problems ever since. can't believe my brake pads actually fell out. I haven't had any problems or anything with my battery, charging, or nothing like that. Everything has been going smooth with my bike. I can't even lie. The only time something happens is if I drop it or 
I cut the wrong wire or I messed something up. But other than that, my bike hasn't had its own problems just from riding, if that makes sense. Another thing is my tires, as you can see, after a thousand miles, a little over a thousand miles, my back tires, the tread is starting to wear down a little bit. And my front tire is really perfect. You can see all the tread on there, all the knobs. It's literally still perfect. So really, I would say you only need to change out your back tire if you really need to. You know, if you're struggling with funds or something like that. I mean, you really only got to change out one tire all the time and it's the back tire. But I still got a little tread on there, still holding on strong. So we all good for now. My chain is still good. If you watch my recent video, I just did a video on the chain adjustment and it's getting so dirty already, like literally already. I just cleaned it, oiled it up, everything, tightened it. And this is how tight it is now. Got about a, a inch, half inch of play. At first it was like, it was super loose. And you can hear it when I'm riding, it'll be hitting my sprocket in the back. So now, it's all good. If you need help with your chain or anything, chain tension, maintenance, make sure you guys check out my last video. And there's not much to really say about it, honestly. I mean, my front forks, you know, I only put air in them one time. My first Suron I had, I had the RST Killer Forks and it didn't have the air adjustment at the bottom. These are the D&M forks and I can put air in them, you know. And every time I do put fresh air in them and I hit my suspension, you can hear it like It makes this weird squishy sound, but I like it at the same time. But yeah, my bike has been going strong. Rotors are still good, suspension, chain, battery still fine, motor. Honestly, I think it's definitely worth it. I have no problems with my bike at all, and I recommend everybody cop you a Suron, no cap. And my grips, you know, these little stock grips, they aren't the best, but they're still holding on strong. And what I haven't been buying is more grips, obviously, and grip glue. Because this grip, I have a little piece of paper in there just to hold it in place because they're super twisty. So after around 100, 200 miles, or just depending on how hard you ride, your grips are going to start twisting really fast. So yeah, you definitely need to change those ASAP before you even get to a thousand miles rear suspension everything's all good my bike still feels like it's fresh out the factory and my fastest speed that i've went let me check and see real quick the fastest speed i've went is 54 max i can't cap that was going a little downhill something like that but flat ground i've gotten my bike to about 52 miles per hour but it has to be on a hundred percent battery Right now it's on 81% and it can get up to about 47. And that's what they advertise it to go anyway. But I'm not gonna hold you guys too long. If it's something that I missed, make sure you guys leave it in the comments below. But I'm about to keep going and film more videos. Make sure you guys hit that like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell for future videos. I would really appreciate it. And make sure you guys go check out my Instagram for my 2000 subscriber giveaway. I'm not going to say the item on YouTube so you guys can go check it out on my Instagram, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, hit that subscribe and we out.